Welcome back to the course on Nourishing of Processing for Music Applications. In this week that we're talking about the Sinusoidal model, in the programming lectures uh, we have been uh, trying to put together a whole system for analyzing and synthesizing a sound using uh, this Sinusoidal model. So in the first uh, programming lecture we talked about uh, the peak detection, how to detect the peaks of a spectrum, which hopefully are going to be sinusoids. Then in the last uh, programming lecture, we talk about how to synthesize sinusoids from those uh, values, from the peak values. And now in this, uh, in this uh, lecture, uh, we want to put it all together and add the missing components in order to actually analyze a complete sound. So we start from a signal of X, and then we do the standard uh, windowing, FFT, and these are the things that we talk about uh, uh, in this week, so the peak detection and how to get the, the amplitude, frequency and phases of the peaks. Then uh, today we're going to talk about the sinusoidal tracking, so how to build a tracks out of those peaks. Then uh, once we have these sinusoidal tracks, we can do the synthesis. So we can uh, synthesize uh, the spectral uh, peaks or the, the, the shape of the sinusoids in the spectral domain. And then we can do the inverse FFT and do the overlap add so that we can we, we sort of uh, add the, the time varying aspect of the sound and we can reconstruct uh, very complex uh, sounds. Let's uh, open up um, the file that includes most of the functions that are needed in the sinusoidal analysis, which is the signmodel.py, which is part of the uh, SMS tools package. In this uh, file, we have several functions that are of use uh, for the sinusoidal modeling. For example, this first one is uh, the sinusoidal tracking. Then uh, there is another one which is uh, cleaning uh, sign tracks that we will talk about. Then there is one that uh, implements the whole sinusoidal model, analysis and synthesis, but does not include the tracking aspect because this is meant to be used in real time. So it cannot uh, do a tracking uh, and allow some uh, memory in the, in, the, in the process. So we do not recommend to use that unless you want to develop some real-time kind of concept. So what we, we're going to be using and we recommend to use is the sinusoidal sign model anal function that uh, just performs the analysis part and is able to do sinusoidal tracking because it, it allows to have the, all the tracks in one place and then do some post-processing of them. Okay, so in here we, uh, the input is the, the whole input sound X, the sampling rate, the window, the FFT size, the hop size, then the threshold for the peak detection, and then uh, a number of parameters that uh, are important to control the, the kind of these time varying aspects of the sinusoidal tracking. So for example, one is the maximum number of signs that will be allowed at the same time. The fault is 100, so normally you put quite a lot of them, so to allow for creating and, uh, and disappearing uh, sine waves. And then uh, we control the minimum duration of a track, so the default is 0 0.01, so the tracks that are going to be shorter than this value are going to be deleted. And then we're going to control the allowed deviation from one frame to the next of a given track. So in this case, uh, the, this uh, deviation, which is in hertz, 20 hertz, it means that in the lowest frequency, um, it allows from one frame to the next for a peak to change a frequency by 20 hertz and still be part of the same track. And then uh, this uh, frec depth slope uh, is a way to allow for this deviation to increase as the frequencies are higher. In higher frequencies normally you would like this uh, deviation to get uh, higher so we can change that by controlling this slope. And the bigger this, uh, the bigger the slope and therefore the biggest, uh, the bigger the, the change with the higher frequencies uh, will be. Okay, and then in the function, um, it's not that long. Of course, it has a lot of the, the parameters and the, the, um, the functions that we already have seen. The core is this uh, while uh, loop that uh, basically uh, what it does is it iterates over the whole sound and 
it performs all the blocks that we talked about. So it performs the DFT using the FFT algorithm, it performs the peak detection, then it performs the peak interpolation, and then it, uh, it puts these peaks into tracks. And this is what uh, we're talking about uh, now. So let's look into this function, the sinusoidal tracks. Uh, which is uh, right here, okay, in this function from the peaks that uh, the, the algorithm has found in a particular frame and from the concept of tracks, the concept of a series of incoming tracks with uh, uh, specific frequencies, um, we are building uh, tracks, we are basically continuing the incoming tracks or creating new tracks according to these deviation parameters. So this function is a little bit long, but it's a, a lot of cleaning and, uh, and setting up things. The, the whole concept is not uh, that complicated. It's simply the idea that if there is incoming tracks, and if not, tracks will be created, but uh, from these incoming tracks, it finds the, the peaks that are closest to those tracks and then if it's close enough according to deviation they will become part of the track okay so if this uh, deviation is uh, is a small we will add it and um, otherwise we can also create new tracks here okay so if there are peaks that are left that have not been assigned to any existing track we can create new tracks so tracks will be uh, being will be created and will be uh, disappearing if they are not used uh, in the in, a, in the following frame. Okay, so this returns a series of tracks. Okay, so if we go back to the function of the sine model and all, okay, after this uh, tracking, it's done. Well, again, there is a whole bunch of uh, of variables needed to handle these tracks and how to. Uh, pack them in and, and clean the, the matrices so that uh, we uh, save space. But then uh, this is done until the end. And then once everything is done, before returning the tracks, there is a cleaning uh, step. So this cleaning step receives all the tracks that have been computed for the whole sound, and it will delete the ones that are shorter than what we specify. So if we go to this function, the cleaning of the tracks, cleaning uh, sign tracks, it's a very simple, it just simply goes through all the tracks that have been created, it looks for the beginning and endings of each uh, track fragment, let's say, and if a track fragment is uh, below a given length, then it will simply delete the track. It will set the frequencies to zero. And that's what it means to clean the tracks. Okay? And that's uh, all the, the sinusoidal model does, the, the analysis uh, of that. Uh, so let's uh, use a function that, uh, or a script that calls the sinusoidal model now. Okay? So this is uh, a script that uh, calls the sinusoidal model on L and uh, with a given set of parameters, with a sound, the over sound, with a given window, given FFT size, etc., all the parameters that uh, we talked about. So let's uh, run this uh, function or this script and, well, it will print the, the actual tracks. Let's, uh, let's run this then. Run uh, test 6. Okay, so uh, this of course will take a little bit more than a single uh, short time for your transform. So this is the result. Here we have all the tracks and we see the tracks in different colors. Uh, and things uh, that are uh, important to notice here is that, for example, even if we see a single line, we can see that uh, there are several colors. That means that a track uh, was, start, was, uh, was alive for some time and then it disappeared, so a new track started, and then it disappeared, a new track started and disappeared, etc., etc. So this is uh, um, the idea that tracks can appear and disappear. Um, then also we see that 
Uh, most of the tracks correspond to the harmonics of the sound, but some do not. For example, here in the high frequencies, clearly we see uh, tracks that are quite short-lived and they, they may be uh, tracking some noise component or they may be tracking some side lobe of the, of the analysis. And uh, this is uh, uh, something that uh, with the sign model we cannot do anything about it. Of course, we can control the length, so all these tracks, the, the minimum length was the one that we established, which uh, was 0.1 seconds. So all the, all the tracks here at least are 0.1 seconds. If we had set this up to a different value, for example, let's, let's leave it to 0 0.0. So and now we can uh, run it uh, again. It will uh, do the same analysis, but it will allow to do many more uh, tracks. So now, well, it track things uh, higher up. But if we zoom into the area we were looking at, yeah, we see many tracks uh, that are very short and uh, presumably correspond to uh, fragments of little sounds or side lobes or things like that. So the cleaning of the tracks is a good way to uh, get rid of all these uh, kind of that typically may be corresponding to artifacts. Okay, then we can do the synthesis. So the sign model synthesis is this function here, and it will receive these tracks that we analyze, and from them it will call basically the uh, generation of the spectral signs. So it will iterate over all of them, and it will generate the main lobes of the Blackman Harris windows. Here there is some consideration for the phase. We might uh, want to not pass any phase. Here it passes the, the analysis phase, but in some cases the phases will be reconstructed from scratch and uh, it allows for a reconstruction of the phase uh, at the synthesis stage. Anyway, so um, this uh, sign model function, which is in uh, the actual function that is, uh, is called by the interface that uh, we use in the demo um, class. It, it has uh, one function, main, that calls the analysis and synthesis of uh, a given sound using this sinusoidal model. So the parameters, uh, the default parameters, it uses this bendier sound and then it uh, does the analysis and then performs the synthesis and it outputs the sound file. And it also plots the, the input sound, the sinusoidal tracks, and the output uh, sound. So let's just call this uh, function. Let's uh, close uh, this one first. And if we run sign model function, so we copied in our uh, directory and we had to uh, change uh, a few of the relative uh, paths of uh, files. Okay. So now it's computing the analysis and synthesis of this bendier sound. Okay, so this is the original sound. And here we see these uh, trajectories and the resynthesis from that. So if we uh, zoom into here, for example, let's zoom into a particular area, we will see all these uh, quite messy uh, sinusoids that are coming in and out and uh, in this type of sound, that's quite normal because there is a lot of very uh, partials that are very unstable and they disappear and appear uh, at, in, a, in, a, in a short uh, fragment. Okay. So we can listen to, to those uh, sounds, for example, uh, let's listen to the, um, the resulting sound. So we created uh, a, a file in this directory the synthesizer is called Bendir Assign Model, so we can uh, use the play uh, system command to, uh, to, to play this sound. Okay, and it's not that different from uh, the original uh, file that, uh, that the Bendir uh, uh, we inputted. So anyway, so that's uh, that gives you an idea of how to use uh, the, the SMS tools code and how to understand it. 
so uh, now the idea is that uh, by yourself you can play around with these parameters and really go into the different functions and understand uh, what they do. Uh, so let's uh, finish with that and uh, so we have seen the, the whole sinusoidal model from a programming perspective and within the SMS tools package we have seen all the functions that uh, perform all these different analysis tasks and uh, synthesis tasks so we have a pretty uh, good uh, code base uh, with which we can do a lot of very interesting things um, again uh, this is just uh, one step into further uh, complications on the on these models so now we have seen the, the sinusoidal model as a, as a model that will allow us to do quite a few things but we can do more and uh, so next week we will be talking about the harmonic model which is a way to restrict the sinusoidal model to track only the harmonics like in the oboe sound I think it was clear that it made sense to do that and uh, we will also uh, extend it uh, with uh, other uh, new approaches to the, the spectral analysis and synthesis sound so I hope to see you uh, next week and thank you for your attention.